in this tutorial I'm going to show you the basic steps of setting up a paper cutout effect to create a themed graphic illustration. Uh, for the purposes of this demonstration I'm going to use uh, graphic elements that correlate, uh, correspond to my home state of Minnesota. Uh, if you're following along or just want to create a similar type illustration, uh, you can get various graphic elements that pertain to your location or state, country, whatever you're in, whatever you are wanting to create in your design. Uh, I am using a, my illustration document size will be eight and a half by eleven. So to get started, I want to create my outer border. So using the rectangle tool, I'm just going to create an eight and a half by eleven inch uh, rectangle. And hit P on the keyboard to center it. Uh, for now, that'll be good. Next, I want to create my inner frame, which will be the outline of my the state. Uh, let's add a let's add a light gray fill to this so that we can see what we're doing. So we'll center the state up in the document. I'm just going to move it slightly. That looks good. Next, I want to uh, create my inner paper cutout levels. So, to do that, I'm just going to zoom in here and I'm going to go over to the toolbar on the left here and I want to grab the freehand tool just because it's going to be make it super quick and easy to create. The, the paper cutout levels just because you can just quickly squiggle in the shapes that you want. And we're just gonna kind of loosely follow the shape of the state. Just connect that. Uh, let's see, how many levels do I want? I want one, two, three, four, five. I want five different levels. So one. Go. Don't worry. You don't need to worry about connecting the the endpoints. We'll do that in once we're all done. So yeah. Another one. Yeah, one, two, three, four. So we need. Okay. So yeah, one, two, three, four, and five levels. All right. Next, I just want to select those those four objects that I just created. And I'm just going to go up to the top here and under the Pathfinder tools, I'm going to combine them. I'm going to switch to my uh, shape tool here on the, the toolbar. The shortcut is the number two. And I just want to close up all these, the, any open objects that I might have. Uh, is that one? Yeah, it's just a close anchor point. Okay. Uh, let's see, we'll close that. Looks like I just got an extra one there, so we'll just get rid of that. All right. Next thing I want to do is I don't want any kind of sharp jagged corners, points or anything. So I'm just going to select all my anchor points, right click and I'm going to switch to smooth and then I'm just going to kind of adjust them and you can do this as well just to get kind of smoother curves to your object shapes. Yeah, do that. You 
you can modify your shapes while you're doing this just to get just to just get a more aesthetically pleasing uh, kind of levels to your cutout. That looks pretty good. Once that's done, I'm just going to, with it still selected, hit Control K on the keyboard to separate all those objects into individual objects again. Uh, next thing I want to do is select them all and give them a solid fill color. And you'll notice that the as you the objects are aren't showing showing up. Uh, you can see from the edge outline that they are there so we just need to rearrange the order of the objects. So we select these three and we'll hit shift page down. Select the new one, shift page down and just repeat until everything you can see all your objects. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do um, is I want to uh, offset each of these objects a little bit just so that we can get, when we go to trim and combine the objects, that they will overlap instead of butting up against each other. So I'm just going to select each object. Go over to the toolbar and select the contour tool. I'm just going to do an outside contour. I'm just going to give it about that much just to give us a little something to work with. I'm going to hit, once you do that, I'm going to hit Control K to separate them. I'm just going to repeat that step for each object. Okay, so now that we have all those, I want to now create each level's individual objects. So what I'm going to do is take the original objects for each one, and I'm going to combine it with the uh, object that would be one step above it. So. In this case, I'm going to select my state object and my uh, framing object, the rectangle. Uh, yeah, there we go. And I'm just going to, up on the Pathfinder, I'm going to combine them into a solid shape. And you'll, if you move that, you can see now that you can see through this. Obviously, I just have a framing object here. The Let's see, move that down, uh, let's see, so now with this object I want to take, basically repeat what we did with the, the state. So we'll take this, this object and the darker gray uh, offset uh, state part and we'll just combine those and we're going to do the just repeat the that process for all these objects here so take this combine it with that offset take this combine it with this offset and then take this and combine it with this offset so what that's going to do is it gives us a ledge essentially over the like this is going to be our furthest most back object so if you select that and hit shift page down you see that the the object above it is going to slightly overlap this is just just to give us a 
a cover so that we don't get a white haloing effect around each object. So with that still selected, select the next one, hit shift page down and repeat all the way up to this darker gray one. This way, the reason we did that is we want our paper cutout effect to look like it's going down and in towards the center. Um, uh, with that done, we'll just give these some, um, reorder these so that we can see our the effect we want as it's receding in, it gets darker and darker. Um, with Once you have your various levels set up, next I want to kind of actually create my kind of graphic using these, these tree, pine tree vectors and this deer vector. So we're going to bring this guy in here. He's going to be roughly about here and we're gonna have him this deer kind of near the top or top level let's see one, two. It's these trees over here this one maybe out here let's see, bring these two over okay so now we'll just work on our Kind of placement. And this is just a uh, kind of what's kind of aesthetically pleasing for you and your elements that you're working with. And so we have that cover. So let's see. Let's play around with these. Let's see, let's create a little either sun or moon object. Kind of bring it out. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think that looks good for there. I want these two trees to be ab above this tree, so I'll we'll just select those and make sure they're higher above in terms, in terms of the arrangement. That's going to be good. Um, you can sit and play around with that, the arrangement and placement for quite a while. Um, but once you have everything kind of set where you like, they want to go ahead and add in our colors. And I'm using this kind of blue gradient color scheme for the, the various uh, objects. Um, quick way to get a nice uh, kind of gradated color palette is taking your lightest color and your darkest color and we're going to use the, the blend tool to get us our swatches. So if you just blend the two, you can get a quick and easy color palette to work with for your, your various levels. You can pick which ones you want from however many steps you use. But yeah, there's a quick way to do that. So uh, let's see, let's want our darkest color in the back. And we're just going to use the, each lighter color on each step up. I'll do that. I'll do that. And then 
see, I want trees to be the lightest blue. At least the the furthest or the closest ones. And then this one, I think I want it to be just a shade darker. Um, yeah. And then the sun slash moon, the deer, and our outer frame will be white. And I'm just going to select everything and remove the the stroke outline so just with everything selected right click on the X on the left hand here that just gets rid of all of our outlines to see how everything is looking so I think, I think everything looks good we just want to make sure our white objects are the highest most then these the lighter blue trees we'll shift page up to make sure that they are above the, the cutout layers. Once that's done, once you have everything kind of in place, now we want to create our drop shadow to give us our cutout effect. So in order to do that, we're going to select, we'll start by selecting our cutout layers except for the bottommost one just because you won't see a shadow behind it. But with them selected, you're going to go over to the toolbar here and you're going to grab the drop shadow tool and just anywhere in the middle of your selection just click and drag and then with them still selected you want to come up to the top here and under the shadow feathering setting I'm going to switch mine to 5 just because we don't need our the, the shadow blur to be have a far distance that's all that's doing is just increasing your distance from the edge of your objects um, once you like your setting there just hit control K to separate those uh, shadow objects from the cutout objects we'll just deselect and then we're just going to use our transform panel and we're just going to move them out of the way I'm just going to go just off the the edge of the uh, off the bottom part of the work area here. We'll just repeat that for each object just so that they're out of the way. Next I want to create my uh, drop shadows for the trees and I want since these two are on the same level I'm just going to group them so the drop shadow will create one solid shadow object for both trees so select all the trees I'm just going to repeat the same thing just click and drag a drop shadow out I'm going to adjust my feathering distance back to 5 control K to separate them and again I'm going to move them off the, the workspace here. The last thing I want to do is I want to create shadows for these, the deer and the sun slash moon. Uh, I want to leave the sun at 15 so I'll hit control K there. And this is the deer I want to adjust down to 5. Okay. and then we'll just move these off and the last one we want to do is create a drop shadow for our, our frame and this one because it's a larger object we need to go with a smaller off uh, feathering so I'm going to go with a 2 uh, and then hit control K to separate and then again move it off so we should have all of our shadow objects below our workspace here and the reason I'm doing this is just because it's easier to select them and not have all this the main graphic detail on top of them because I want to convert these objects into bitmaps uh, in order to do that just select one 
hit K on your keyboard and the convert to bitmap dialog box will come up and I want 300 for the resolution so click OK and just repeat that for all of these objects. That's all of them. Once you have that done, you're just going to select them all and I'm just going to move them back up into place. And now I want to, using the arrow keys holding down shift, I'm just going to go down and over until we get the of shadowed effect that we're we're going for um, it should look like the light source is from the the top left here coming at an angle down so that these edges on the top left will get more shadow distance than the bottom right edges um, once you have that done the, the last thing is I just want to make sure that my the uh, shadow from the frame isn't above the deer which it is right now as you can see a little shadow on the white part here I want to look want it to look like it's one seamless uh, board like object to border so in order to do that just click the the shadow object for uh, the border and hit control page down it should be should be just one step down but it might be a couple more depending on how you had everything set but now it's just a seamless transition between the deer and the edge of the bottom of the state there um, one last, uh, let's see, well with the, right now when you do the drop shadow, the it creates an object that's larger than the original object, so I don't want my, the edges of my shadow object to extend past my white edge here, so I'm just going to, using the shape tool, grab the anchor points and just move them inside the the edge of the the frame object just like so and then to finish off the illustration I'm just going to bring in the little title object and we're going to use the white the lightest blue here and we'll just get rid of the black outline And once you have done that, you have a finished paper cutout illustration. Hopefully these steps are pretty simple and easy to follow that you could create a similar paper cutout illustration using a theme of your choice. Uh, yeah, uh, happy illustrating. Thanks for watching.